All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you have joined from. Thanks once again for joining the part two of this webinar series related to SQL Server weight types. Last week, June 20, on Thursday, same day, we delivered part one. The recordings of part one are now available on sqlmaestros.com. All you need to do is go to navigate to sqlmaestros.com, jump over to the recorded webinar section. You can subscribe to the webinar. It is absolutely free. Or you can just become a free member on sqlmaestros.com and access all our free content so that you don't need to subscribe to each webinar again and again. When you go to the webinar section, you might see that some webinars have a nominal price tag to it. Uh, for those, uh, you may become a premium member. Once you take a premium membership, you get access to all our paid content, which means all paid webinars will be available to you. And you will get access to the premium content, premium video lobby. There are two lobbies there on sqlmaestros.com, the free one and the premium one. Anyway, whatever your need is, you can just go and subscribe um, either free or paid and get access to that content. This webinar, this one is part two now, which is in the series of part one, part two. The next week we have part three and then the following week on July 11, we will have part four. Okay, friends, quick check. Can all of you see me, hear me? And yeah, you can see the screen. I hope all that is good. in the chat window, maybe you can confirm. And as I always do, let me know which, where are you joining from today? Your country. It's always good to see global participation and I love to read. It also gives me a list of so many places uh, which I would love to visit and I've just heard about them. Wow, look at that list, it's huge. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for taking out time. And I hope the content is going to be useful. So we were talking about uh, part one. So let's just quickly do the basics and then you can record, uh, watch the recordings as well. So what we did in part one was I talked about what your query is doing. And I gave a very simplistic overview that your query is either running or it is waiting or it is runnable, which means ready to run, but it's not getting its turn on the CPU uh, or else it's just not doing anything. It's sleeping. So our focus was waiting. And when your query is waiting, there might be more queries waiting for the same resource, which like forms a queue. So we spent some time talking about these concepts. Then we jumped straight into our SQL Server database engine that when your query is waiting, uh, a wait type is assigned to it. And that's the real focus of today's content the common wait types. And when a wait type is assigned to it, which means what it's waiting for, SQL Server is also recording the wait time in milliseconds. With a couple of other metrics, we call this a, uh, that as wait stats. So the wait type and the wait stats and all these metrics can be accessed from two DMVs, dynamic management view. The first one is this DMOS wait stats, which is DMOS wait stats, which is a, which is a uh, instance wide cumulative wait stats, um, uh, DMV, which will give you historical information. And the other one is this DMOS waiting tasks, which will give you real time information, which means what's going on right now. We're going to use these ones today. And when, and when you look at this uh, wait types, there are so many of them. And I gave a list of starting from 2005 all the way up to recent versions of SQL Server. With each release, the number of wait type classes have only increased, which means SQL Server is giving you more and more and more granular level information about what your query is waiting on. Okay. All right. So we talk, also talked about the thread execution. So I, I tried to give an illustration as to what's going on right now, which is the first part, which was this part, and then how the state changes. Something is running, goes into the waiter list. Something which is in the waiter list goes into the runnable queue. Something that is in the runnable queue moves up and starts running. So how the state of thread keeps changing in a very dynamic fashion. And it happens just so fast. As we speak, there have been like thousands and thousands of context switches happening. CPU is just so fast. So we talked about this. And then I also uh, talked about another illustration, like these are certain 
common way types and when the requests are coming in multiple requests are coming in how they're getting queued up they're all waiting up and on the right side you will see their wait stats piling up right so you have so many requests waiting for these wait type and then you have the statistics okay so i think uh, so this was wait types then the queues and the stats okay and the resources that are available to you the tools how could you how can you troubleshoot this remember wait types and wait stats are very fundamentals to performance tuning in sql server and query tuning so it is very critical that you know where this information is captured and how you can access it so sys dm os wait stats and waiting tasks are the most common ones which we have been using for so many years in recent versions of sql server you have a new dmv like sys dm uh, uh, exec session waits. I think I changed that. That's not the right uh, DM uh, uh, view system ex session session query waits or something. I'll check that. Um, that that uh, DMV name is incorrect. And then you have the properties window. So that that's a uh, a, a lovely thing when a query is running and it is slow. Uh, you could uh, actually go into the execution plan, select the select operator, and look into what where the different wait stats occur during the lifetime of the query. And then of course you can capture a lot of this information using extended events. This baseline database that you see on the right corner does not exist. This is your custom thing. If you want to record these metrics and put it up somewhere so that you could review later or anal analyze later, then you will have to create your own baseline database. Okay. That's it friends. This is what we covered in part one, but of course we discussed all these concepts along with the demo in part one. So if you have missed part one, don't worry, let's continue with part two, but you should go and watch part one again. I will recommend that if you're new to wait, wait, wait types and wait stats. Okay, let's get down to the content for part two. First things first, do we need to worry about every wait that occurs? So I'm just trying to ask a few questions on your behalf. What do you think? What are your answers in the chat window? Do you need to really worry about every single weight that is occurring? Okay, all of you know, and some of you can guess that no, you don't really need to worry a lot about all the weight types. So in a lifetime, in the lifetime of the query, right, um, be it a second or be it one minute of execution, whatever it is, the query is going to come across a lot of different weights. You don't need to worry about each and every weight. Yes, if a particular weight, uh, uh, a weight occurrence is unreasonable, right? Let's say a blocking scenario for 30 seconds. Your query is waiting for 30 seconds to access some resource. This sounds unreasonable. Then it is a matter of concern. Likewise, you have so many different weight types. And today we are going to look into CX consumer, CX packet, page IO latch. All of them will have high flying numbers like five digits, six digits, seven digits. And you would be like, oh, this looks huge. No, sometimes they are just those numbers. Your query is running fast enough. You don't need to bother. Of course, the first indication is that the query is running slow or SQL Server is generally performing slow. Then you go and dive deeper into the weight numbers. But then you have so many different weight types and these weight statistics you know, at your disposal. It is overwhelming. How do you conclude that, oh, these weight types look bad. You know, their numbers look bad. How do you decide when a number is good, bad, or ugly? Well, you have to compare them with the baseline. And this is what I mean here with baseline database. So I am going to give you a very, very simple metaphor. And, and then you apply that metaphor, that analogy with SQL Server. So, so many of you work, right? You, uh, some of you may be working from home. Some of you go to office. I'll just take an example that you're visiting your office. Let's say your office in time is nine o'clock in the morning. You're supposed to enter your office at nine o'clock. And sometimes you reach 8.55. Sometimes you are reaching bang on time at nine o'clock. Sometimes you reach at 9.05 or 9.10. Now the point is anything between 8.55 to 9.10 is acceptable. So, which means uh, one fine day for whatever reason, one fine day for whatever reason, there was a huge traffic jam, you know, on from on your way from home to office and you were waiting in that traffic. On normal days, you're still waiting. 
you are still waiting in traffic, right? Uh, you will very, very rarely will you have those days when you just don't get any signal at all. You, need, you can drive nonstop from uh, home to office. But then you get traffic and you have to wait for a few minutes. All that is acceptable. But one fine day you wait in the traffic jam for 30 minutes. That is totally unusual. Maybe there is a breakdown on the road or something, whatever be the cause. But then you are waiting for that 30 minutes and you reach office at 930. That is unreasonable. Now, those are the types of wait and the wait, uh, uh, waiting that you will have to capture. Uh, that's the one which you have to identify, you have to diagnose and you have to fix it. So that's exactly in real life. Whenever you have unusual weights, similarly in SQL Server, when your query has unusual weights, we need to identify that. And you can only do that when you have a baseline. So your baseline when you're reaching office is like 9.5, 9 o'clock, 9.10. All these are your baseline numbers, like the benchmark. And when you're reaching around that time, it's all good. But the moment you are further laid by 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, that's a cause of concern. But then how are you identifying that 9.30 is a bad time to enter the office? You're late by 30 minutes. Why? Because you have some baseline. You have some benchmarking. And that is so critical when you're dealing with weight stats. Otherwise, today, if you go to your SQL Server environment and just simply write select star from sysdm os weight stats, and then you, you say order by wait time ms descending, which means show me the highest wait times on the top, you're going to see a lot of big numbers, right? Like six, seven digit numbers. And you would be wondering, where do I begin from? Where do I start and whatnot? So the idea there is you have to have a baseline so that you can compare these current numbers with the previous one. Okay, I spent a lot of time answering that first question. Now you may have more questions like, what is the significance of signal wait time, request versus task level versus session level waits? Why some waits do not show up? Some will show up, some do not show up, etc. Which means, friends, there's a lot of advanced part to this weight architecture. I'm not going to cover all of that here in this webinar series. And uh, I hope you will appreciate that a lot of that advanced content gets covered in our master classes. I'm here to do this level 200 stuff, but then please do not expect that we'll go up to level 300 or level 400 stuff. For that, there is master classes uh, up there. And of course, we have to be fair to our paid subscribers and you know paid masterclass uh, you know people who have paid for that so they get that content anyway but these but at least you know that okay these are things that you want to know and you should be knowing when you're diving deeper okay what are the common weight types there are many common weight types and you can categorize them like weights related to io weights related to concurrency weights related to cpu weights related to memory and here is just a very quick snapshot to, I mean, in of course, in our part two and part three combined, we are going to talk about CX packet, CX consumer, page latch, page IO latch, resource semaphore, et cetera. But then just there are so many. You should also be aware that there are a lot of weights which we term them as system weight types. They're always going on as even you have a assigned SQL server, which is not serving any request, even there are weights occurring there as well. So yes, you got to filter them out in your analysis. I mean, you will see some of these things coming up in on those as stop weights, but you just got to filter them out. This is all noise. So you got to exclude them so that you can only focus on user weights. Okay. Now, common weight types. So today in part two of this webinar series, we are going to cover CX packet, CX consumer and page IO latch. And then in part three, which is next week, we will cover page latch, resource semaphore and thread pull. That's the idea unless I change something on the fly. Now with each weight type that you're, you're seeing here, I'm going to talk about, we are going to identify it, we are going to diagnose it and we are going to fix it. That's the basic approach we are going to follow. Friends, I'm not going to diagnose and fix each weight type here uh, simply because I will not have that much time. Uh, it's a very time consuming thing to really talk about a just one weight type, 
diagnose means troubleshoot a lot of different things and then you got to fix it it's it's like a mini project in itself but then i'm going to give you pointers and fillers and again sorry to iterate this again but if you want to do all of this one two and three with all weight types etc then you got to go to the master class recordings 40 hours that's the one you should pick up you get lifetime subscription okay friends time for action let's jump over to the vm and I'm very thankful to Zoom. It has not kicked me out and I hope things go well. So let me press escape here and jump over to the VM now. Okay, friends. So let's begin. So first things first, we are going to talk about CX packet and CX consumer. Uh, those of you who are new would be like, oh, what are all these CX packet and CX consumer? Uh, when your query is running it has to run either on a single thread, which is serial execution. And sometimes SQL Server will decide to run it with multiple threads in parallel. And that is what we call as parallel execution. When, when your query is running uh, in parallel execution, which is parallelism, CX packet and CX consumer wait types may show up. CX here means class exchange. And uh, these wait types just simply mean that parallelism is occurring. But then, as I said before, if the wait time is unreasonable and the numbers are pretty high compared to the baseline, then, of course, you should be investigating. Okay, so now I want to do CX packet and CX consumer uh, together because they are both related to parallelism. And uh, so what I will do is first, I'm going to run a query here because this is going to take some time to execute. I'm going to start this off and then uh, jump over and do CX packet. So first, let me let me let me just do what I want to do and, and, and things will be clear as we move forward. So here is a business report that we want to run. OK, let's just go. Let's turn on the actual execution plan and let's execute this. Now, while this query is running, it's taking some time to execute, right? The session ID for this is 78 that you can see here, okay? Now, the query is running slow. And, and this is what we do, right? All the time, the query is running slow. You want to go and identify what's going on with the query. So let's open this up another window. We get into the troubleshooting mode, whether you are a developer or a DBA. What you want to do is, okay, I'm... I'm seeing a slow running query. Let's find out what it is waiting for. So what we do is let's just put select star from SIDS or DM underscore OS underscore waiting tasks, right? And we say where session ID is equal to 78. Let's just filter on this session. Otherwise, you will see a lot of stuff that uh, you will see a lot of stuff that uh, that's not important right now. So let's go and execute this. Now, what you see here is that your query, which is running under session 78, is encountering certain wait types related to <clears throat> exec sync and CX consumer. Okay, so in our free webinars here, we are not covering exec sync, but I can tell you that's also related to parallelism. We are going to uh, cover CX consumer. Okay, now we are going to keep this window as it is. I'm not going to do anything here right now. I know the query is doing some work. It's waiting. Let's just let it finish and then we will troubleshoot it later. So it is more than one and a half minutes. If you look at the status bar closely, it's more than one and a half minutes. It's touching two minutes and the query is running. Okay, let's jump over to the other windows now. Let's just close this one, okay? So CX consumer wait type is happening, what it is and what's going on. Let's not bother on that right now. Let's now switch over to CX packet. So I am going to our masterclass content here. This is the one that I was talking about of which you have the recordings now. So, you know, like very exhaustive content, very comprehensive. So we'll, we'll go into the module one and I'm just picking up some demos from here. We jump over to common wait types and we'll go to CX packet. So let's open CX packet or SQL and let's open monitor CX packet, both of this. Okay. Now, if I just filter on sysdmos waiting task where wait type is CX packet, I just want to see if there are, are there any threads waiting on CX packet. Let's go and execute and you will see, okay, no one is waiting on CX packet. 
Now we have a query here. Uh, do I have AdventureWorks 2014? Okay, I have. I've changed the context. What I'm doing is we are running a select statement, sales order detail, and then we order by line total. Okay, uh, we are running this in a loop. We're going to run this 10 times. Very straightforward execution. If you look at the select statement itself, sounds so simple. It's this simple select statement order by a specific attribute. Every time I run this query before that, I'm dropping clean buffers. Okay, this is a little tricky stuff. So I'm just going to uncheck this, you know, because I don't want the other execution to be affected. So I'm just going to comment this. I hope it doesn't do any bad. Okay, let's go and execute this now. Jump over here and let's see. Okay, now you will see. Let's go and stop this. So you can see the execution went pretty fast. We were running 10 instances of this. It was going on well. But while this execution was going on, I looked into the de dem OS waiting tasks here and I filtered on CX packet. And you can see this was our session ID 79 where we ran the query. And we can see that threads waited there were a few threads that waited on session ID here in session id 79 they all waited on cx packet now look at the duration the duration was very very minimal look at one millisecond two milliseconds etc but anyway there were some weights there execution context id etc a lot of that you know the advanced stuff which i'm not covering here all what is important for us and for you to know right now that my query was waiting on cx packet so what really happened now so i'm going to take this query let's just take the query and let's just remove everything else so that you can only focus on the query and let's select this and turn on the actual execution plan let's go and run this again what you are going to see that this execution, this query was parallelized by SQL Server. So when you jump over to the execution plan, you can see, of course, this is a parallel operation. How can you figure that out? You can see all these yellow uh, arrows there. This means that it is a parallel plan, a plan with parallel operators. So SQL Server has used multiple threads for the execution. How many threads? You can take up any of these parallel operators. Let's take the first one, clustered index scan, right click and go to properties and jump over to the actual number of rows there. So you can see uh, SQL Server fetched one, two, one, three, one, seven rows, just to zoom in there that you can see here. And if you expand this, you can see SQL Server did this with the help of eight threads. So my VM here on which SQL Server is running has eight virtual processors it's using all of them so one thread for each processor thread zero is the controller thread and each thread has processed these many rows so thread one was dealing with eighteen thousand rows etc thread eight was eleven thousand so you can see the distribution is uneven because of the skewed and uneven distribution what happens is Threads are waiting on each other. So let's say you have eight team members and you're assigning some tasks to them. One team member would finish earlier than the other. So the one that finishes earlier is waiting. And likewise, they're waiting for their sister threads to complete. So your subordinates, team members are waiting on each other to complete, which means they register for CX packet wait type. And this shows up there. That's why we call this as class exchange packet weight type. Now, whether these numbers, whether these weights that you are seeing here, and of course, this is very, nor, uh, you know, very negligible, very nominal, but other, otherwise in real world, you will see big numbers. Now, the question is identifying. And when you're identifying, you're also identifying that are these weights actionable, which means are the numbers high? And do I need to really troubleshoot? Well, the first indication, as I said, is that the query is running slow. That's the first one. If the query is not running slow, if it's running within those acceptable uh, time frame, everything is good. But if it's running slow, then you got to go and take some action. Let's assume that CX packet numbers are high. The query was not running as fast as expected. And you want to now diagnose it. What you need to understand that CX packet simply means parallelism is happening. You're seeing that numbers are high flying, okay? And you know that, okay, you need to take certain action. First things first, 
don't disable parallelism. Don't just go and set max dop to one. Max dop is a server level property. Now it's available in the recent versions. It's also available at the database level. Maximum degree of parallelism. That's what max dop means. I see a lot of people set it to one, which will disable parallelism. Disabling parallel execution in SQL Server is not a good thing because in most cases, when your query runs with parallel threads, it's doing a good job. But then because the parallel execution architecture is not flawless inside SQL Server and due to ske skewed distribution, it may happen that sometimes parallel execution does not make sense and you got to identify that. Let's do that here and, I, and you will understand what I'm trying to say. So here, if you see, why did SQL Server parallelize this query? Then that's the first question comes to my mind. So if I take the cursor over the select operator, you will look at the query cost. So if you see the estimated subscree cost is 4.3 units. There is no unit of measurement here. It's 4.3 units, which means the optimizer, which is uh, computing and preparing this execution plan, assigned this cost 4.3, which is um which means the optimizer is is uh, has certain threshold right the optimizer has certain threshold this cost 4.3 uh so okay let let me take a step back what happens when you send your query to the optimizer the optimizer will first prepare a serial execution plan. It does not straight away jump to a parallel execution plan. it will first prepare a serial execution plan. If the cost of the serial execution plan is more than a specific threshold, then it will consider creating a parallel execution plan. Your immediate question is, what is that threshold? That threshold is cost threshold of parallelism, which is a server level setting that you can set. By default, it is set to five, which is a very low value and we should be changing it. That's also one of the best practices. So first I want to identify what's the cost of the query when it was a single threaded execution. What you're seeing right now is the cost of the query when it is a parallel execution, 4.3. Let's just simply copy this and make another version of this. Or I, oh, sorry, why, why do I do all of that? We can just say option max dot, oops, option max DOP one. Now, when you execute this, this will be a serial execution and you're going to get the cost of the query now. So the cost of the query with serial execution is 10.4. Let me write this here. So this is 10.4 and this was with parallel execution is 4.3, which means what's the threshold now? Let's go and set the threshold. So let's go and check the, okay, that's a server level thing. So I'm going to just minimize this and jump over to server properties. And in the server properties, let's go to, go to, go to our advanced there. Okay. So you can see cost threshold of parallelism is set to five units. Again, I want to repeat, there is no unit of measurement here. This is just five units. This is a very low value. There's a lot of background to this. Where is this value coming from? It's coming from a very old version of SQL Server, which was initially set, and you should be changing it. Let's change it to a something like 60, okay, which is a reasonable value to start with. Now, friends, you know that if you change it to 60, what's going to happen? Let's do an OK here. 60 here means that now 10.4 because... Earlier, the value was 5 and 10.4 is higher than 5. SQL Server switches over to a parallel execution. But now, now, if you run this, you will get 10.4. 10.4 is less than 60. What do you think? Will we get parallel execution now by default? I'm not going to run this one. I'm just going to run the one, this one, where we got parallel execution earlier. Are we going to see parallelism now? Okay. As expected, let's go and execute this. And you are going to see, yes, it is a serial execution. No parallelism at all. If you want to watch the remainder part of the webinar 
and all the remaining demos, you can subscribe to the webinar on sequelmaestros.com and get lifetime access to the recorded webinar. All you have to do is just go to sequelmaestros.com, click on the recorded webinar section and get access to all the webinar recordings. There are many of them. Some of these webinars are free and some of them are very nominally priced. So the ones that you're interested in, you can subscribe to them and get lifetime access. Now, because there are so many webinars, subscribing to each webinar might be a bit cumbersome. So we have another option, which is SQL Maestro's membership. So the first link on SQL Maestro says join. If you click on that, it will bring you to SQL Maestro's membership. Things are very simple. There are two membership levels. The first level is free, where you get access to all the free webinars and all our tutorials and demos, more than 200, 300 demos and tutorials. All you have to do is just become a free member. You're paying nothing and you get access to all of them. So you don't have to go and subscribe to each webinar individually. Just become a free member and then explore the free video lobby. So if you go to the video lobby here, there is something called as free content where you get access to all of that. But then all of us are interested in advanced content, isn't it? And that is where premium membership comes into play. So the webinars that are paid and there are many advanced tutorials and demos. If you want access to all of them, you can become a premium member and pay a nominal price, which is annual membership. Once you do that, you can explore the premium video lobby. If you go to the premium video lobby from here or just go to the video lobby and click on premium content, you can see all the paid webinars and all the advanced tutorials and demos and access get access to all of them uh, with your annual membership. Anyway, choice is yours. There's a lot of content on sequelmaestros.com and you can also explore the YouTube membership level as well. So you, you have free content on YouTube channel and you can also join and become a member of SQL Maestros on YouTube where you can pay a monthly fee, get access to all the paid webinars and advanced content. So in summary, you can go to sequelmaestros.com and become a member or you can become a member on YouTube also. Becoming a member on sequelmaestros.com turns out to be a little cost effective with the annual membership in comparison to YouTube monthly membership. But anyway, choice is yours, whichever platform you wish to use. Happy SQL.